In Shvi of Parsha Svayachi, we come, of course, to the conclusion of Sefer Breshit <clears throat> and the introduction, if you will, to Sefer Shmot. So let us look at Sefer Breshit Bigadol. <clears throat> the, if you look at the creation, uh, it appears to be a series of disappointments to a certain point in time. There's a disappointment of Gan Eden. There's the disappointment on, a, on another level of Cain and Hevel. There is a disappointment of, of a Kodesh Baruch Hu looking at the world, Vayinochem Hashem, Nichamti Kiyosisi. A Kodesh Baruch Hu regrets that he made the world but there's Noah, and in the end, Noah saves himself, but the rest of the world is destroyed. Migdal Bovil. And then a light appears. That light is named Avraham. Avraham goes on and goes to Lech Lecha. He's following the word of God. And on the other hand, at a certain point, he questions whether this will be able to maintain itself, right? I don't have any descendants. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu promises him a descendant, and that descendant is introduced by the words, and the first time the verb is found in the Torah, it's a verb that means many different things, but in terms of memory, Vashem pokadet Sarah kasher amar. HaKadosh Baruch Hu remembered Sarah as he spoke. And a son is born. And Avram is a success story. Yitzchak, Avram, Avram ready to sacrifice himself for God. And not only that, Avram and Yitzchak are both ready to engage in a sacrifice the ultimate sacrifice for God. And then Yaakov. And Yaakov goes through what he goes through, and the Shatim go through what they go through, and it seems as if the tragedy is looming, but it's not. Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu said when Avram questioned him, God said, you should know that your children, your children, your seed is going to be a stranger in a land that doesn't belong to them. In other words, not the land of Canaan. And it would appear that this is what has happened because at this point in time, all of B'nai Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov are Be'aretz Lo Lohem, even though they're living in the fat of the land in Eretz Goshen, and they're surviving very well. But Yosef, who was certainly a person who not only saw dreams, but who saw the future, as Paro said, Ein Kamocha Chacham, Navon V'Chacham Kamocha. You are a person who understands, you see what's coming. You are the epitome of Roe et HaNolad. Parshas Yevayichi ends, the Sefer Shmos ends with the memory verb of Pakad. Yes, we're in Egypt, everything is fine, we're living in the fat of the land, but it's not always going to be that way. And Yosef repeats twice in this final speech to his brothers, Vayomer Yosef Elechav Anochimet, the Lokim Pakod Yivkodetchem, I am going to die, and but God will surely remember Pakod Yivkodetchem, and I adjure you, you must you will be brought up from this land. Chamushim alu b'nei Yisrael me'eretz Mitzrayim. 
They will go up. God will take you out of this land. Why? Because this isn't your land. Vayashba, and then again, Yosef causes them to swear, makes them take an oath. At Bnei Yisrael, his brothers, Lamar, Pakod Yifkod, again, Pakod Yifkod, Elohim et Chem, Valitem et Atzmotai Mize. And you, God will surely remember, again, Pakod Yifkod, and I want you to take me out of Mitzrayim, as my father did not want to be buried in Mitzrayim. Take me out of Mitzrayim. And when when Moshe comes in Parsha Shmos, he God tells him and he tells the people and the people believe him. Three times do we find Sukkim with this expression, Pakod Yifkod, and Rashi says that this is the very code word to, to ensure that they will believe that this Kanim, who this tradition was passed down of Pakod Yifkod, that they will believe that you are sent by God. Pakod Yifkod. To, to remember. To remember this. And this is the, the uh, hope. Pakod Yifkod. We're living in Egypt. Golos Mitzrayim began when they forgot that they were in Golos. So says the Alexandrova Rebbe. But there were those who did not forget. It was a secret passed down, forgotten by many. And in the times, the worst times, they knew that there would come a time when God would be Ma'ale Otam Me'eret Mitzrayim. And that that gave hope. And this is the transition, the transition of Vayechi, of, of Sefer Breshit, in which the, the issue of hope, the issue of God's hope in man and man's hope in God is, is tried, is tested again and again. And it ends, if you will, on a positive mo- note. We have we have the Bnei Yisrael, and the Bnei Yisrael as a kind of a nation, an incipient nation, are in dire straits. They don't know it yet, but they are in dire straits. And when they will know it, what will bear them on into the future is despite, despite the most difficult of galiot, of exiles, the most difficult of conditions, living in Mitzrayim, which is the Meitzar, which is the Tzara, which is the narrowness and the, and the oppression and the slavery, they are not to give up hope. They carry with them a mission. The mission is to leave, that God will bring them up, and their mission is to remember to bring Yosef with them. This is a mark that we take with us throughout history. Galut Mitzrayim is the is the uh, Galut that signifies the other Galiot, all the Galiot that Am Yisrael is in, all the difficult conditions that we're in, that we are a people of hope. It is perhaps, more than perhaps, fitting that the national anthem of Israel is called Tikva, Hatikva, Hope. Ki lishuatcha, ki vinu kol hayo. We pray every day. Yaakov, in the midst of his brachot, cries out, Lishuatcha, ki viti Hashem. There will be difficulties, but I yet hope for your salvation. Kos Yeshuot Dekra. Now, I will add something. Perhaps some of you have heard this from me before. Um, when when um, in Shmon Esrei, Ki Lishuat Chaki Vinu Kalayom, we hope for your Yeshua, for your salvation all day long, all the days, every day, all day. In Nusach Svard, Hasidic Svard, 
there's in some, in some Siddurim, it's printed actually in the Siddur, and others it's in parentheses in the Siddur. Ki lishuat hakibin kol hayom umetzapim lishuat. What does that mean? The word tzapot is to hope. It's the same word, but there is a difference. Now, the tr- in truth is that this apparently was a kavana of the kavanot that were were, uh, were were practiced by the Kabbalists, particularly the Kabbalists of Tzvat, under the influence of the Ari Kadosh. that when you say, Ki lishuat chat kivinu kol hayom, Umitzapim lishua yishal kavana umitzapim lishua. But what what's different about it? What does the word signify? So I submit to you that the word sofeh is hope beyond hope. When you hope, for example, the example I give is when you hope that somebody that will come, you know, you have a guest, you invite them to their house, so you hope they come. If you really, really, really yearn for them to come and they're late, you go out in the street, you go out to the sidewalk and you look down, you might walk down to the next corner to see if they are coming. Not that your looking is going to make them come any faster, but you want them so much that you want to see them in the distance because you're distressed by the fact that they're late. To look out for something, that's Har HaTzofim, Mount Scopus. That's because the the guards were posted because from that area, from that section, from that direction, the invading army could attack Jerusalem. And it's from that Har HaTzofim that Rabbi Akiva found hope when everybody else was crying. The Gemara at the end of Makos, when they saw the foxes going out from Kodesh Kadashim after the destruction of Esa Mikdash. But from Har HaTzofim, Rabbi Akiva was able to see into the future, into the significance of this terrible thing that it boded as evil as it was, as difficult as it was, it boded that Yeshua was nonetheless on its way. And this is one of the things we are asked when we come after after death and before the Beit and Shomala, Tzipitali Yeshua, not Kivitali Yeshua, the Gemara and Shabbos, but Tzipita, did you look out for Yeshua? Did you look out for Umetzapim Yeshua? And this Mitzapim Yeshua is coded. When will someone arrive with the memory that I have been, God has remembered you and I have been sent, and I've been sent to fulfill this, this mission? There is a story that occurs to me now as I'm speaking, and that is the story I first heard from the Rav uh, about Rav Chaim Velazhener. Chaim Velazhener used to say that it would tell the following, this is the way Mashiach will come. I'll be sitting, I'll be sitting at my table and learning and suddenly I'll hear a tumult in the street, a tumult in the street, noise, shouting, and I'll go to the window and I'll open the window and I'll say, Rabbi Yankel, he's standing outside in the street. What's happening? Everybody's running, everybody's shouting. He said, Rebbe, you didn't hear? Mashiach came. Mashiach is here. And I'll think to myself, Oi, on Shabbos a button fell off of my kapata, off of my frock. And I forgot to ask Relka, it's his wife, to sew it back on. And so the frock, the kapata that I have to greet Mashiach is missing a button. What did Reb Chaim mean by that? Uh, many, many interpretations of this story, but it occurs to me, he's saying, if I really was Mitzapi Yeshua, then the first thing, and I know that when Mashiach comes, I have to, <laughs> I have to put on my Shabbos ticket, my Shabbos clothing, my Shabbos kapata, then I wouldn't have said, no, it, could left to be, it doesn't have to be done right away. It doesn't have to be done right away. In other words, was I thinking, what was I thinking? That Mashiach wouldn't come right away? And that's what Rav Chaim says. That's what it will all be involved with. Yeah, Mashiach is coming. We are aminim b'nei maminim. But it's one thing to believe, and it's another thing to yearn, to look out. Me'al piskat har ha'tzofim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, 
should grant us the wisdom to understand the difference between Yeshua, Yeshua Schakivinu, and Metzatim Yeshua. And we should take what Yosef is saying here, the clue that no matter what, as long as we are in Galut, as long as Mashiach hasn't come, as long as we're not in Eretz Yisrael, all of these things together, then we are in some way, in some way, in the triumph.